everyone! Today I wanted to talk about The Vegetarian by Hong Kong. This was very popular on booktube in the latter half of 2015 and the early half of 2016, so I am quite behind the times when it comes to this book, but I still really wanted to explain my thoughts anyway. And it's a book that I've really been wanting to read since I first saw it reviewed on Jean's channel back in late 2015. So it was a very long anticipated book for me and it also was quite hyped up because so many people I knew had read and reviewed it. And the reception that I heard was rather mixed. So despite the fact that it was the winner of the 2016 Man Booker International Prize, I know some people really didn't like this book or it just did not connect with them at all. I did have a lot of prior knowledge and expectations leading up to this book, which sometimes I think can diminish my own experience or even cause me to dislike a book because my expectations are too high. But because I'd heard so many mixed things, I don't think I really knew what to expect beyond the premise. And this had a lot more going on than I'd expected it to. I think the most important thing for me is that it's not really about the plot at all. And it does so much beyond its premise that I don't really find the premise to be all that compelling. When you explain that it's just about a woman in South Korea who decides to become a vegetarian, which basically is the premise, but there is so much more going on than that. I think there are three big things that were really interesting to me. Um, themes or motifs that really captured my attention and things that I was trying to unpack as I was reading and have left me thinking about it since I finished it. And those things are gender roles and expectations, specifically in South Korea, consent and choice, and the last one is mental illness. So a little bit of background in case you haven't read this book. As I said before, it is about a woman named Young Ki, and she is a woman living in modern South Korea, and one day after having a very vivid and visceral dream, she decides to become a vegetarian, which is something that we in the West I think would more describe as veganism, because not only does she refuse to eat meat, but she refuses all animal products, both the ones that you consume and also things like leather. We get the story in three chunks with two years in between. The first perspective is from her husband, the second perspective is from her brother-in-law, and the third is from her sister. I think that's a really important piece of the, my understanding of this is the way that it is structured and really ties into the themes that I spoke of before. I think the gender roles and expectations are really crucial to the way that we look at this, particularly because two of the perspectives we get are male perspectives, and both are extremely objectifying. They Neither of them really view Young Ki as an individual with her own choice and agency. These two perspectives of sexual objectification actually come in really different forms. Her husband views her as an object of servitude. She is intended to be the perfect ideal Korean wife. She is supposed to cook and clean and basically be subservient to him. It is intended to be an object in his perfect life and is really an important key to his image, especially in his professional image, much like a house or a car would be. It, one of the most interesting things for me about this perspective is that one of the things that bothers him the most about his wife, this mental breakdown, is that she stops wearing a bra and it's really embarrassing to him that she refuses this basic gender conforming thing that we expect women to do is to wear a bra and because we don't see it from her perspective we don't really know the reason why she refuses to wear a bra. I'm assuming things like maybe comfort as, as major motivations to this. She doesn't really seem to care what think people think of her appearance. It's really embarrassing and shameful to him that this really feminized object of his wife is refusing to conform to something that we define as very feminine. And I found that, that to be really really interesting is that he, he's angry that she has chosen to refuse these gender norms. And these ideas of female objectification are actually quite different when you look at it from the perspective of the brother-in-law. She is denied her own voice because she is this object of sexual fantasy and he doesn't want to know her as a real person. And he only really wants to see her as this object for his own desire and pleasure. And I don't want to get too much into the, the second and third parts of the book because this is getting into spoiler territory and, and this is not intended to be a really in-depth discussion or analysis of the book, although I feel like that could easily be done in this video would be extremely long if I tried to go into that and I didn't prepare enough to do a full in-depth literary analysis of this book, but I think there's so much to be said about gender roles and conformity and choice, but then there's also the idea that this really isn't a book about vegetarianism at all. It's really about this woman's mental state and how her mental illness begins to manifest through delusions involving food. And she begins to make choices involving her eating, but it's really not about eating. And it's really frustrating when you think about the responses that her family has to vegetarianism. They're disgusted and they're horrified, but it's not because they can see the breakdown in her mental state, but they are upset that she would choose something that is deviant. And they try to force her back into conformity in order to make themselves comfortable. And it's like they're blind to the fact that she's having a mental breakdown and she really, really needs help. But they're so 
distracted by the implications of the, this woman choosing to defy social norms that they, they can't really see beyond that. And it's, it's really a heartbreaking look into this woman's struggle with mental illness and delusion and, and eating disorders in manifesting what she calls vegetarianism. And I just find this exploration of a family's complete failure to help someone in their time of need to be really interesting. And I think that it's really important that we never actually get to see Young Hee's own perspective because we, we do get little snippets of her, her mental state and her interior monologue, but they, they're really disjointed and it really wouldn't comprise of a full story, so narratively it would be difficult to follow. But I think it's even more important to come to understand and recognize that it's mostly about the fact that everybody is so self-involved in Young Hee's life that they don't really see her problem for what it is. And they only really see it in the context of, of how it impacts them and their image and their desires. So really, in the end, it's a book about being really self-involved. In terms of just the book itself, beyond the themes that I've tried to discuss and unpack a little bit here, it is a really beautifully written book. Deborah Smith is a translator and she did an amazing job. This book is, is extremely well written and I find the writing to be lyrical and really evocative. To me, the parts that I found the most interesting were the ones that were written from Young Hee's perspective. There were just little snippets interspersed in the sections where we got to hear a little bit about her dreams from her own perspective, and I really enjoyed those. I thought that those were the most visceral, interesting in terms of the writing style, but I do think that this book is structured in a very interesting way. It manages to say quite a lot for being just barely under 200 pages, and I think it's actually really incredible for what it was able to do in such a short period of time. I'd also maybe really want to read the other things that Hong Kong has written. Of course, I think there's only one other one that has been translated into English so far, but hopefully others will emerge soon, because I think that a lot of, there are a lot of really interesting things going on here, um, and I would love to think more about gender roles in South Korea and, and expectations of women, and I think that that's being done in a really fascinating way in this novel. This book could be potentially triggering for its discussions of eating disorders, and also there are instances of sexual abuse and violence. But I would definitely recommend this book if you're interested in literary fiction, particularly one that is a little bit surreal but not fabulous, not magical realism. And it's just a, a, a look into uh, one specific character, Yong Ki, from three different perspectives. And I think it's really interesting to see how the three different perspectives all contradict one another and also inform our own understanding of a person that we never really get to hear from herself. It is sad that she never gets her own agency to tell her own story, but I do think the way this book is written and the fact that we never actually get to hear from Young Hee herself in a, a long form and never get to hear her explain herself too much, I think that that's really powerful. And I, I really enjoy this novel. So if you're one of the few people out there who has yet to read The Vegetarian, I would definitely recommend it. And of course, if you've read The Vegetarian, which likely you have, I would love to have a discussion down below if you have any thoughts on the things that I discussed in this video or recommendations on where to go next. I know very little about South Korean fiction and it's a thing that I've been really wanting to explore for a long time. I just don't really know where to go and I'm really happy to see that more things like this are being translated into English and will become more accessible for everybody. But if you have recommendations, I would love them. I would love discussion to happen in the comments. And other than that, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.